Technology is trending. Now, maybe before we start, I first want to give you the scares. And uh, you can please point this first down. So, how do you think? Uh, sorry, three verses. The Lord says to my Lord, that's amazing. The Lord says to my Lord, that's amazing how this daily could see the Trinity in the Spirit. Sure. Come on. The Lord said to my Lord, now, uh, in the New Testament, he explained why did he say that Jesus explained what David said in the New Testament. But he said that my Lord, the Lord said to my Lord, that is, Father saying to Jesus, sit at my right hand. Jesus, sit at the right hand of the Father. Until I, the Father, make your, Jesus, your enemies a footstool for your feet, sure. my son. The Lord will stretch out your strong scepter from Zion, saying, Rule in the midst of your enemies. Your people, so let's everyone say, your people, your people will volunteer free on the day of the hour. In holy splendor from the womb of the dawn, your youth are to you as their a freshness, the break of dawn, the a newness that will come in. What a freshness when your servants, when your children follow you freely. That's the day. That's a new day. Yeah. That's a freshness. Yeah. When there's men and women of God that will volunteer free, and we will volunteer free in the day of your powers. What day is tomorrow? It's the day of a lot of needs. Or do you believe it's a day where God wants to manifest His power? He wants to manifest His power. But God, because He wants to manifest your power. I'm going to walk with you. I'm going to serve you. I'm going to help. Because I'm going to see your power. I'm going to see your power. <laughs> Not for, I'm trusting you for your power. I'm trusting you for your power. I'm trusting you for the money because of Yes. But go and serve and you will see me. <laughs> Are you still here? Go and serve. Bring the five and those who to the disease. How oh, pathetic, man. What's how wrong with your mind? But bring the five and those who to the fish to Christ and say, God, what must I do with what I have? I cannot sing, I cannot dance, I cannot this, I cannot that in the church, I cannot that. So what can I do? I can do this thing and you can pay yourself. When you go pick the five and those who to fish. Yeah. You serve, you bring into Christ. It was not just they were, it didn't fall from him at all. <laughs> somebody brought it, somebody served. Amen. Lord, sure. He was seeking five years of reality. Where is this? Where is this? Where is that? Sure. Is that where, where will we find food? The practical, practical service. Well, the apostles were claiming the foundation for me. The big test in church. Yes, they have them also. But they were trained by the what? Bringing their food, looking for food, having a crisis. Hello, we have a camp and there's only food for 150, not food for 200. They have a crisis. I think they had a bigger crisis. 5,000. I use a bit too fish. We'll go and do this tomorrow at some day. Man, can you please leave? You need to wake up in life. You remember that story? Half of you heard it about uh, Samuel always was confused. He wasn't Italy, he wasn't as though it was somewhere there. Yet he was there. He had it. Why was it trial? I didn't do it. You didn't see that video, that just thing. I see it was Esmeralda and Mickey, maybe. I would never forget it. How these guys on Christmas Day and on Easter, they would go out and they would um, give food to the guys on that big. And these people, they lived there. They, even, they were even gangs. You know what I'm saying? It's a whole. Society. 
<coughs> and so he was that day, and this guy that testified, he's a medical doctor. And he said, you know, I'm going to church, and there's a funeral, and there's baptism, and there's a marriage, and maybe Easter and Christmas, he can't read if you like it. And so this day, he must do his yearly deed, a good deed as a servant, and he's going to help handing out food. On Saturday, the way we were there, and it's the bread, and it's the ham, and he's saying, he was in charge of the ham, that we're going to do food. And then something happens. Not the one gang rock, but both gangs. And today it's going to be blood. But he explained this in an hour, and people were laughing the whole time. He said, What are we going to do? There's not enough food. And they prayed. They didn't even pray for multiplication. They were just worried. But they served. They served. I know. Everybody say they served. They served. Even with faith. Even with this guy that's not really into the Lord. The time, but they served. And they were a son crying out to God. And this guy said, and it just happened. He's cutting the hem. And he's not getting smaller. And later he's cutting the hand, but he must so because he's so crying because in the presence of God, because he will now look where he needs to cut this hand because it is not getting smaller. And so they gave everybody food, and still there were a lot left. This man, the doctor, he said, with him it was just a repentance. And that basically the medical the testimonies came into the community <coughs> and people started to bring food. And because of that, a lot of guys got food and a lot of kids, a lot of kids started to get the attention and they saw that they are writing things on the cross on the rock of the city. Great rent breaks. And so they started the police school, they started the uh, primary school, they started. At the end of the day, I was like, is this guy lying? Is he uh, exaggerating? How with education, how with this? <laughs> that suddenly, with these guys in this community, God just did this amazing, amazing, amazing thing. That they had this house letter where people can. Not always for free, but sometimes for a very, 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 very low price. We can we get some food? Amazing. My brother must just be stuck with the guy and said, okay, four or five times a year I will go to church. At least once for my conscience I will go to church and do something for the community. Are you with me? Oh, come on, do what you want to do with God. And you will see miracles. You will see Amen. 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 We are very happy. You are welcoming the people. Trust God to bring you. Greet that people. Those people there. The presence of God will come on them. Not just when they And you greet them at bowl there. That's for one. I'm not talking about something like that. I'm just saying that as you greet them and as they enter, today I'm going to welcome the people. Those people that can enter, they will be so open, they will be so teachable, they will so be, uh, be longing for the presence of God. So they will, they will have such an energy, such an sensitivity in the spirit, and they will have such a hunger for the Lord when they come to us. And when you welcome the people, they come to be with with God. Yes. Not just doing a job for God. But priests, kings, what you do for the Lord, as a king, you do it with authority in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus to say, devil, you spirit of performance, you spirit of, of irritation and frustration because the others didn't do it, now I must do it. You are the demon of frustration of doing your work at the church now. You are the demon of frustration of welcoming the people in. Oh. Mm. All we need as you unto the Lord, see the privilege and see God touch it in like every woman. Now there's no more understanding. Pray in tongues. Pray. Bless the guys that came in already and the guys that are supposed to be there. Uh, let the fire of God be on there. Well, <laughs> pray for them. Are you with me? 
of establishment, establishment, and you will see. Right, right, right. Please. For you remember your people, God's people. God's people. And this is a promise, a promise from the Father to the Son. I will raise up a people. And your people will volunteer freely. The people of God, the people that are serving the Master Jesus Christ, they will have quality. They will volunteer to freely. There's one scripture, I'm not going into the middle, it's going to take too long. We need to go into right accessories. And that, uh, the scripture is saying, have this attitude, do this, do this, uh, serve one another, do that. And then at the end of that whole part, see, then do whatever you do in the name of the Lord, not as for people, but as. Unto the Lord, no. Amen. Amen. Don't waste your life here on earth. You can express in servanthood something that you cannot express in heaven. You cannot express that in heaven. But make sure that when you serve, you don't get arrogant. You don't get an attitude. Because that's the thing, when you start to serve, as long as you don't do it for the Lord, hell saying, and all the demons that must come and come with an agenda against you, as long he can serve. But let him serve in such a way that he feel frustrated that why nobody else is doing this? Why that? Why that? So that his life is a waste. So that what he do, he's building in the flesh. He's building a house with straw and, and wood and everything that will be burned away with fire. No, 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 not anymore. <coughs> Rule in the midst. This is not in heaven. Yeah, in the midst of your enemies. And in the midst of the enemies from hell. In the midst of the destruction that hell wants to bring in nations. The destruction what hell wants to bring at the university, at the school, in the business field, in the marketplace. There where you study, there where you are, there in Bloemfontein. In the midst of many demonic forces that are assigned to Bloemfontein to destroy the people. In the midst of all the agendas from hell without demons. Rule. Rule. And hell. You're a servant volunteering freely. Amen. Amen. Okay. My brother, my sister, I think first of all, in this, what is the mandate what God gave us? Why did, why did we plant a church? First of all, because God said so. Um, first our spiritual father, um, you remember <coughs> Dr. Jonathan David in Malaysia, he called me and Jeline in, he said, um, they're going to tell you at Agape, you must choose. Either come with me or go with Hatfield. Uh, what, are you going to, what are you going to choose? I argue with him. and No, they will not do that. They will not do that. My brother and my sister, you can speak up your mind, but make sure just in what attitude. If you feel something must happen, if you feel something must happen, but you don't feel, but what about this? Please speak up. Because maybe you have an idea that's excellent. Are you with me? You could have an idea, say, Jesus, I, I have an idea. I want to take responsibility for this. I have an idea. Let us send them to the towns so that they will all get food. And Jesus, you know, has no respect for his idea. Oh, did you find people like that? They serve and then they have ideas and then it wasn't taken and then they take offense. Oh, puppy. You know, so it's time for the disciples to whip him and just walk away. You know, I, I think I had a real excellent idea. And now I'm going to question Mark whatever Jesus is saying. Because I had at least a logic idea that really could work in the church. I have an idea that really can work. And then they didn't take it. They got this ridiculous idea. And not that the leaders will always be right and <coughs> that idea will be wrong. But be careful. Be careful. Because sometimes when we bring that idea really before the Lord, God would say some ridiculous statement. No. You're not going to go there where all the resources are. You now give them food. And then the words, but, Lord, <laughs> let me explain to you, if you didn't know, <laughs> with all respect, Master, 
We only have five loaves of bread and two fish. Let me give you the excuse why we not be able to do it. And then after the excuse, he said, bring everything. And still they brought it. Even though they thought this will never work. Be careful in your serving. That if you feel this will never work, that it could still be the Holy Spirit saying, let's do that. And let's do it by faith. And maybe our faith didn't work that at that place, I'm not saying do something irresponsible. But can you hear what I'm trying to challenge you? That what you do, you're going to do with him and for him. With him as a, you know, as a king and for him as a priest. <coughs> you are still here? Okay. So bottom line, so he said, no, they're going to do it. He laughed at me. He laughed at me. Uh, as I said, no, they're gonna, not going to do it. We're going to put the manet on the ground of our previous spiritual father in what he did, and that is, he laughed at me, and while I'm speaking, he's laughing. Ha! Huh? You give your idea, you give what you believe, and Emil is laughing at you, or Peter. I will never laugh at you. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, laughing at you, interrupting you, and he's telling me three months. I'm saying, I've, I've talked already, I'm not even going to explain it. I'm not even going to hear what you say. Interrupting me, laughing at me, say, three months. Talk to us the 3rd of June, 2nd of September, we planted the church. When we got here, the letter was already there. And not because they are bad, and they are just because it's a different flow. And it was prophesied long ago, there will be 12 different tribes with 12 different uh, anointings, 12 different nations with unique uh, destinies. And I was the only one of the 12 under one where God said, go and serve as a younger brother. Go and serve, go and serve. Hello, serve. You're all the brother. And then it was just the time for the, for the eagle to, there you go. And God did an amazing work. And so I said, God, what, what is the essence of what we're going to do? And immediately God gave me just this verse. Okay? John 14, 23. If someone loves me, he will obey my teaching. My father will love him. And we, we will come and make our home with him. And God said, I want to make my home with my people. And that's the essence of your mandate. That in this church, in what we establish, in there where you go, you have one passion, that God must make his home in your business, home at the university, home in the school. He must be so welcome in that place. Home in your thought patterns, home in your ideas, home in your vision. So it's not, God, is this the right thing, is this the wrong thing? Before that, God, <coughs> how will you be welcome? How will you feel this is your place? How must I build a business that God would say, this is my business, not yours? Not just a theological statement. Not just a statement that you agree with. But a reality. So I want you to write your name. If, if your name is Polycarpus, if Polycarpus loves me, Polycarpus will obey my teaching. My father will love Polycarpus. And we, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, will come and make our home with Polycarpus. Will you please write your name in there? There, on the first page. I've, uh, I've oh, we did some dots on the dots. Sign on the dotted line. Um, thank you. If we must build with eagles, how do you work with turkeys? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> and then, out of that, the statement, may, let's try Emil, okay. May Emil's house be your home. Lord, this is my commitment. Write your name in there. May Treya's house be your home. This is my invitation. My invitation. And how, that's one thing to say, how will he be welcome? If you love him, you will obey what he says. If you love him, you'll obey what he says. Just write there quickly, Ecclesiastes 12. After that, everything is vanity. Everything is meaningless. Everything is meaningless. We see this guy, he's working in freck. 
And at the end of the day, what? What does he have? Hello. And he says, everything vanity, everything meaningless. And at the end of the day, where he says, I don't understand anything in this life. The Solomon with all his wisdom and thousand wives and all the riches of the world. I understand nothing. But the only thing is fear God and obey his commandments. And what is that? Be a servant that you respect your master and do what he says. Servanthood, <laughs> at the end of the day, the core. Respect your God and do as he says. You go and look it up. Okay. So, we, I want you to say, please, have the heart of the vision. Have the heart of God in what we do. Whenever you do it, please. Now, you know the seven vision statements that's there. And uh, we're not going to have time necessarily now. <clears throat> but when you have time, where are we now? But we started late. We didn't start nine o'clock. We started half past. Hey, because you guys, I called you to be faithful and to be here. But then I wanted to call this the scripture, the scripture of um, the door is closed, knocking in vain on the door. Please don't late. Be late then, okay? <clears throat> don't be late then, okay? I want to say, disciple with a good shepherd, and there's three key words. There's a pattern, there's discipline, there's a style of life. Remember, discipline is not because of mistakes. You can write that down. It's a pattern. There's a pattern. Discipline for the guy that go uh, um, athletics out there <coughs> because he can become <coughs> Olympic athlete. He has discipline because of his potential. Right there, potential. You are discipled because of your potential. Pattern, there's a pattern, it's a discipline, there's a style that you have in your life. And this style is, I'm open for input and I'm giving others input. Don't say, I must go and make disciples if you're not first accountable to somebody where somebody can give you patterns for life. So when you hear the teachings, you are receiving patterns. If you think, what on earth is that pastor saying? It's okay, but ask that to the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, what is he saying? Holy Spirit is saying he's talking nonsense with all respect. No, hopefully never he will say that. But what is he saying? What must you do? What must you do? <coughs> Hello? <coughs> what must you do? Let God give you a pattern. Standing in the Dopperkerk where I came from right in the beginning after I was baptized, baptized in the Spirit, you know, morning, huh? That's, oh, Lord, can they not worship you? And, and Holy Spirit says, look there. Is that old lady not reaching out to me? Look there at that couple. Is they not calling on God for their marriage? Look at that young man. And God says to me, who's worshiping, they or you? Standing here judging them. Ha! Ha! Quite a big repentance in the Dopperkerk. Hello. Be careful, be careful. In whatever situation, God could give you a revelation where you can change and receive discipline for a new pattern. Put something in front of your mouth. You don't go and judge other churches, even though they sit maybe with this religion or that uh, religious system or the law in a certain way. Be careful. Be careful. Ah, you with me? <coughs> Disciple with a good shepherd. Put discipline that what you do, I do this as if unto the Lord. I take this discipline. I do this as if unto the Lord. Now God says, God says, you must come and sweep. Or you must come and pull out some weeds. Not smoke them, but pull out some weeds uh, on the farm. Or cut down some, some dead trees in the winter for the fire. And uh, okay, you're doing it. But you come and do that. Because you do it as if unto the Lord. And maybe you are here and I ask you, please, commit for two hours in a year uh, to come and cut down some trees or pull out some cocky balls in, the, in September where they're going to be very small and look very pretty. This is green grass, but this green grass, a lot of cocky balls. And we must just chit, 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 chit,
you know, come and then you pray. You do that with the good shepherd, You're talking to the good shepherd that is out there in nature, and you are a sheep, and he's the shepherd. Ah, as you me, built with the bread of life. Build. How must I build, Lord? How must I, when I speak, people can eat that and it has substance. When I speak, when I, when I serve, it has substance. It has substance for people to grow. I'm going to grow. I'm going to build his kingdom. I'm going to bring restoration to people in what I say, in how I just encourage somebody at the work. I'm going to, hello? I'm going to bring restoration in their hearts. But when you are here, like I said, some of the guys that, uh, yay, man, for a, year, for a year or two, especially in COVID time, we are just working on the farm in so many ways. I said, you don't work if you don't pray. God, here, thousands will find you. Thousands will be coming in your presence. Thousands will be restored. Thousands. I said, you better pray it out there when you are taking out cocky balls and cutting this down and do this and do that. Otherwise, what the dingus are you doing? Are you with me? Please, guys, I encourage you for that. Train, <coughs> train with the way, truth, and life. Way, the strategy. There's a strategy in what you do. There's a strategy in what you do. And if you don't see, trust God that it will come forth because God is a strategic God. Let's say, my God is a strategic God. So if you are serving, God's going to be strategic in what you are doing so that it will benefit for his kingdom. When you decide, I will do this for God. God will be strategic. He's the way. He's the truth. He will set you free. When you do it for God, there will be freedom in your life. There will be freedom in your life. He, was it not the king? The king in the Old Testament said, who has the word of God? Who has the word of God? You can write that. No, let me finish. Who has the word of God? Oh, there's that professional prophets. There's those guys that can tell you, you know, in this freaky way, uh, what the Lord is saying, what the Lord is saying, what the Lord is saying. And one guy says, there's a guy, he washed the hands of Elijah. Not, he has a double anointing. Not, I've heard his prophecies. Uh, not, yeah, he was accurate prophetically. No. He was a servant of Elijah the prophet. And the king said, the word of God is with him. <laughs> that was all that that guy said. Oh, there's a servant who served and washed the hands of Elijah. And the king said, the, the word of God is with him. You can just write this, servant of Elijah. You will remember that. <clears throat> Activate with the resurrection and the life. Key words. His strength, his power, his ability. Not by power, nor by might, but by my spirit. You can write down Zechariah 4, verse 6. Zechariah 4, verse 6. What you do, my brother, my sister, let it be in the strength and the power of God. You know, just, just one thing. Um, just one thing. Sometimes... <laughs> When I do a lot of things in my own strength and where I have control, you know what God could do? You know, discipline doesn't seem pleasant at the moment. Uh, the word says, hey, you know, with focus. I'll say, praise the error. Um, what am I saying? Um, my Oma, what? Discipline doesn't seem pleasant at the moment. Thank you very much. Now God is seeing that you are in control. You are doing it. You have the gifts. You, can, you are skillful. You can do a lot of things. You know what God can do. And it's, it's not that, with all respect, that it's not nice from the Lord. He wants to set you free. He's going to give you something, not for you to crack up, but for your flesh to crack up. He will ask you to do something that you will fail. What are we talking about? He will ask you to do something so that you can come to a place and say, God, I cannot do this. God, it's not working. God is not... Oh. So that you can reach out to God, repent, and from there, not your strength, not your might, not your gifting, not you. 
And it was the one major point in your life, except for your repentance and baptism in the Spirit and baptism in water. One major point in your life when you had to give it all up. And then you and God went for the next 40 years. And you did it together. Not in your power, not in your might. Praise God for that moment when he gave you something where you cracked up that it didn't work. I'm not where he wants to destroy you. He wants to destroy your flesh that will destroy you. That would want to destroy you. He wants to destroy that because he's a God. He will fight for you. But then he will fight against your flesh also. Oh, you me? So when I do something, let's quickly ask quickly as possible do it start to do it for the lord and as quick as possible say god how must i do it in through your spirit how must i do children church how must i serve how must i dance there the charismatic can can at the back get a, a small flag or bring your own flag you know not the south african flag please uh, just do that start to move wherever you stand maybe just start to move just just teach your body to move a little bit for the lord because you won't believe it the word says those who have talent uh Dance before the Lord. No. He says, praise the Lord with dancing. No, that's, that's not, you're going to miss heaven if you don't do that. No. But your body also needs to learn. There's body language. Teach your body that there's a body language of worship. Are you with me? I wasn't prepared to lift my hand, but I, I lived with an auntie in Arnstrad when I studied medicine and she had these videos about agape and I put in when they were not there I put in the video I watched the video and they worshiped and uh, and in the safety of the house where nobody saw me I went on my knees and I did this it was as if it was freaky now today I'm laughing at it but do something uncomfortable do something uncomfortable with your body you won't believe it, but for most of the guys, it was uncomfortable for the first puff that they took with smoking or with dacha or with whatever. The first one was not this, like, oh, so amazing. Who experienced that? <clears throat> Let me just see your dead hand. You know, even if it was uncomfortable with somebody going to catch me out. Maybe the uncomfortable with this was somebody going to catch me out, you know? Ach, ja, toch. <clears throat> okay, let's carry on. Plant with a true vine. Dependency, productivity, success. You will be productive in what you do. You will be productive in what you do. You will be productive in what you do when you are planted. I'm doing this and I'm rooted in Christ. There must be fruit in my life. Fruit is not you act my frack. Fruit is I did it for the Lord. <clears throat> I did it for the Lord. Has you met me? Has you met me? What was that script now? Two Samuel. Adam is here. Adam, Adam, where are you? Two Samuel, wie is good? Two Samuel 23. Turn the page. After 22, hey. Okay. Verse 15, David longed for water and said, oh, that somebody would get me a drink of water from the well near the gate of Bethlehem. It was just a thing. Oh, he's the master. He's like a god. I must now serve him. Rubbish, man. So, the three mighty warriors. Who? Servants that had nothing to do. <laughs> mighty warriors. Mighty warriors. Everybody say mighty warriors. You can write there down, mighty warriors and the scripture. 2 Samuel 23, verse from verse 15. So three mighty warriors broke through the Philistine lines, through the enemy, drew water from the well near the gate of Bethlehem and carried it back to David. But David refused to drink it. Instead, he poured it out before the Lord. Far be it from me, Lord, to do this, he said. Is it not the blood of men who went all at the risk of their lives and he didn't drink it because of the quality of their servanthood to bring him a drink are you with me i'm not saying and find a drink for someone here beyond the snakes there's not a lot of snakes in any case i'm saying the attitude oh man oh man 
they had such a lot of excuse why not to do that. I, you, can have such a lot of excuse not to serve. To serve the servant, the mighty warrior, the guy with the quality, find something to do. And then after 10 times doing it and nobody said thank you, nobody appreciating you, you quit. Why? Because you didn't do it for God. Why? Because you say God never appreciated that. There's a problem with God's attitude. There's a problem with God's manners, with all respect. Okay, if you have a problem with God's manners and you think he has not a certain character, then stop. But if you know your God, his integrity, his character, as you do it for him, then you keep on. You keep on keeping on. Because God is most probably purifying your heart that what you do, you'll do it for him. And she never made my Okay. All those guys from Saul of of course, that I started to lead to the Lord right in the beginning when I was still a Bible school student. <clears throat> and they would steal everything. And then I would give him a lift. And I get home. And I don't have a lot of money at this stage. When I get home, uh, all the uh, checkers' bags are empty. Where did they put the bread and the milk that they got out of the car and I couldn't even see it? I don't know. I gave them, I, I know. I had certain clothes and and later, two, two, two pair of pants and, and like two or three t-shirts and that's all. Everything stolen. 80% of my clothes. And I said to God, in a moment, they can go wherever. I wanted to say go to hell, but I didn't say that. They can go wherever, but I'm finished with them. I'm finished with them. You know the story, two, two or three of you. I'm finished with them. The next day a guy come, a rough, a very rough Christian. He, he said, come, Cornelius. I said, what? He said, shut up, let me in car. I said, no, where are we going? Shut up, come in the car. <laughs> I went to Edgar's. No, God said to me, I must buy a lot of clothes. I asked him, because you saw my cupboard? He said, no. <laughs> but um, that evening, sorry, Lord. And I went to that guys from Saro Pelsa Corses that were living in, in the city. Oh, that was a different story. But bottom line, serve. And God will teach you. He had to teach me there to serve. Then I take them to church and they are. And then the one guy called me around the corner of the church. I said, we must go in the church. The service started. Came and I got there and he stole a cake in the church hall. <laughs> but the worst, he stole the cake and he's calling me to share it with him. <laughs> Come on. Oh, man. Hundred times I wanted to quit. And God had to, God had to establish some stuff in my life. Are you with me? When God establishes character in your serving, please, my brother, let God purify your heart so that you will be a servant, a warrior that will volunteer freely. You can volunteer because you feel you must. You can volunteer because of conscience. You can volunteer because, volunteer because you think, I must sacrifice some of my time. But an honor unto the Lord, a warrior, a man of God, a volunteer freely. When you get in here, you see some, some stuff laying around. You know, don't judge the others. You say, Who can I, how can I help? How can I do this? How can I do that? Are you with me? Okay, that's that. Reach with the door of the sheep. Inheritance, impact, nations at his feet. You bring people to the feet of Jesus. Amen. You will see opportunity. Reach with the door of the sheep. If you want to serve, really, and you want to do it with God, you won't believe it. He will show you opportunity. Why? Because he is the opportunity. If he's the door of the sheep, it means... It's the entry point for opportunity. So when you fill in maybe a form and you're going to pray, not come out today, but you're going to pray about how and in what way you want to be involved. You do it because you enter that facet of serving through the door of the sheep, Jesus Christ. You enter through Jesus Christ into help at the coffee shop. Enter through the door of the sheep, Jesus Christ, in helping on the farm, in helping with this, in helping in visiting people at the hospitals, in help reaching out, in 
In whatever you're going to decide, don't do it if you don't enter through the door of the sheep, Jesus Christ. I'll be still here. Thank you. Last one. Enjoy with the lights of the world. Fulfill destiny, eternal joy, ultimate desire. That's the last one. Hallelujah. Are you still here? Um, okay. What you do, let it be a joy. You can write there the scripture, Hebrews 12, verse 2. No, I'm lying. Yeah. Fix your eyes upon Jesus, the author and the perfecter of your faith. Yeah? Run the race with endurance and fix your eyes, eyes fixed on Jesus, the author and perfecter of your faith. Yeah, it's verse 2. Who, Jesus Christ, who for the joy sets before him, went to the cross. Go into the most horrific moment of your life with joy. That was Jesus Christ. I'm not saying that's your destiny because he took everything. Amen? Are you with me? But there's a cross that you will take. There's a, there's a suffering where I'm uh, united in his suffering. And that suffering is to get rid of the flesh, to do it as if unto the Lord. It's sometimes a fight, man. The fight, the temptation, is many times not in, I mustn't steal, I mustn't swear, I mustn't, yes, that's true. But there's a fight many times in the serving. In the serving. May God help you. May God help me. I'm not going to go with all the rest, not at all. And uh, I want to finish there. And I, and I pray that God will really, 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 really help you. Um, in all of this, sometime we will talk in the church, maybe one Sunday, about serving. Um, and laying a deeper foundation about this. But now, I don't know if you've got a volunteer training program, hopefully. Did everybody get a volunteer training program? <coughs> <coughs> Wonderful. It's not possible. If there's no load shedding coming up, then... Uh... Okay, so bottom line. Now you, you can... I'm going to tell you what's going to happen just now. All going to have uh, coffee, and if you believe you're going to serve in the future, very practical. In a practical way, you can have... I have one. Is that a new one? Okay, for at this stage. Okay, thank you. Um, so get yourself coffee and, and a rusk or something like that. There's no soup today. There's soup tomorrow and chicken a la king, something like that. Okay, now we're going to have the first session. We are here till 12 o'clock. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you very much for your time. In the first session, that's going to be the longest session because that's the main main facets of help that we need but also uh, main facets of the ministry that we believe <sighs> that we must first establish more the first one is prayer and that's now prayer during the week to say that's like the the aunties praying they volunteer freely we didn't say please we you must pray in the week yeah we we talk in principle but they get together and they pray that's saturday morning where just like this morning there's five to ten guys women's uncles and brothers and sisters they pray no sister just brothers uh, they pray here but every time that they pray they pray also for the school they pray for creare they pray for the church they volunteered freely. You can be involved with that. He's talking about those guys. He's talking about before the service. He's talking about sometimes some guys maybe during a service. You are in one service and you go to the, and you pray during the second service. And say, oh, Lord, I understood nothing. Please help the other guys and please help the pastor or whatever. Pray during the service. So this is about prayer. This is about, about praying for certain people. This is about developing in prayer. That's the one and that will be in the, will that be in the David cave? Who would, all right, let me give the five, and then you just tell me who would want to go there. Maybe we changed in the place. Then the other one is worship. This one will be Emil and Emma, Pastor Emil and Emma, that will lead the prayer at this stage in the David cave, the wooden house close to the bottom brick house. Now the worship in the boardroom. Just as you go out here, this wooden house there, that's Peter and Adam. 
And that's about worship in the main service, if you believe you would love to develop, to sing, or something like that. It's about worship helping with the children. It's about worship helping with the youth, especially some young guys. And worship helping with camps that you want to see, say, how can I help, you know? Maybe you want to lead the worship when we have a lot of old women and aunties uh, so that they don't hear you properly. But... Um, <laughs> Maybe you can start there. But what am I saying? If you want to be involved with worship, at this stage, that's the boardroom. Sound and technical. Um, that's Patrick, Herman, those guys. That is for the main service, for outreach, for camps, for sermon recording, for live stream, for projector. <sighs> we need some help with that, even if it's with the typing. But that can be awesome. Otherwise, it's always three people that must help here, help here. We have a challenge in this church. And the, pro uh, the challenge, not the problem. You know, in other churches, there's no full-time guys. A lot of full-time guys that can do all the jobs. So, like I know some churches where some of our key leaders were sent to, these guys sit with 700 volunteers. I think, how did you get it right? But because we have a full-time a lot of full-time staff, especially for Criari, and a full-time uh, um, lot of students, they're doing a lot of jobs. And I know as leadership we created that pattern in the church, as if then they do all the stuff. And there's 10% volunteers out of the, the church, and 90% the full-time guys doing the job. Uh, it's, it doesn't work in other churches like that. So God must help us to set that right. Please be a pioneer in that. And if you're going to help with something, please get another 10 to, to come and help also. I'm asking you, I'm pleading with you. Is that okay? Hospitality. You're going to come together where at the cou couches? There. Oh, they could be a lot, but let's see. Let's see. Um, Jolene, Nadia. It's about the welcoming, you know, nice face. Communion, washing up, new members, help with the new members to get, for everybody to get something to eat. We had new members here. <coughs> and that Sunday, when we had something to eat for them, some of the church guys just came, <laughs> or members already, and they just came and they took and then, no, how, uh, we cannot say, hey, give back. <laughs> um, sometimes just to stand there and to help with the tea or something like that. <clears throat> now we are when you um, coffee stations to help with this, even sometimes to help to ask somebody, um, you want coffee, you want tea, you know, let me go and make for you, especially for the older people, man, that they must stand in a row, and maybe they are tired, maybe they are not feeling lacquer. Uh, what about, hey, auntie, uncle, come and sit. What do you want? Tea, one sugar, one this, one that, right there. I'm bringing you. Oh, come on, man. Why, let's be a blessing to one another. Is it, you with me? Flowers. Maybe we'll put one flower. Just go and on the way here. Take three flowers from a garden and pour it in a pot or something. Hosting guests. Hosting guests. We have all of the faithful ten. But when international and, and, and national guys come and there's some stuff, please, man. <clears throat> we need people. Sunday set up. Even with chairs, one, two, or three people that are aware, hey, yeah, yeah, we need a next, a next row. Why must I and that guy and that leader focus with that? We can have one or two or three. Says, hey, I will just stand more at the back, worship from there, and uh, not from afar, but worship the Lord from there. And um, but I will have my eye. Now where's the chairs? And I, when I see it's getting fuller, I will put out some chairs. When somebody's coming late. Um, the, the lady that stood there with the, with the pamphlets, maybe I see there's new guys coming in and let me make sure that they have something in their hand. The servant, his eyes are open. His eyes are open in that sense. Are you with me? And the last one, children's church. For coordination with the children's church, helping with the, with the syllabi set up, um, the venue set up, discipline, not bring a rot or a rotang with, please, prayer, prayer pointers, and you, are, and you have a story. You have a story that you can tell. Tony Traya did uh, 90 years of, of uh, children's church, and uh, she had this 
Wat was sy naam nou weer gewees? The monkey. And the kids, they were, uh, they enjoyed it so much. You know, so, maybe you can be the monkey. No, maybe you can have something. And, uh, and let the kids come to know you. You know? And first, just to be there, just to have the presence of somebody. And you sit there and you pray. You're not even, not just checking the leader out in what he does. But, it's good that we have people doing the challenges, but 90% of them not married, not having kids themselves. <clears throat> Maybe the rest of us say, I'm fed up, I had enough of kids in the week, let me just have a break on a Sunday. Not you guys, but other people. But, uh, okay, that's in the Esther Palace. So, we quickly want to hear between prayer, worship, sound technical, hospitality, and children's church. Who wants to be? How many of each one? Now with a prayer. Let's just check if the David cave will be big enough. Who wants to go with a prayer? Let me just see, quickly see the hands. Just a quick. Who's going with a prayer? All oh, the guys are going with something else. Emilia moet meer gebed het vanmorgen. In drie, vier, five. So those who want to go and understand in the cave about prayer. That's going down past this building, past the first uh, wooden house. That's an Esther house. Uh, where the ladies stay, and then the David cave, the second wooden house. You, you go out here. All right, that's you guys going there. Um, worship. Worship. Who wants to be involved more in the worship, even if you pray? Okay, I think boardroom. Yes, that will work. Sound and technical. Who wants to do the sound and technical, helping with that? Great, you will be here. Uh, hospitality, with all this other stuff, and the friendliness, and all the other serving, you know, and the helping the, the friendliness there in the front. Donkey, Nico, you look long. No, or can you dance? Um, donkey. Hospitality, and then the children's church, the last one. The children, who wants to help with the children's church? Okay, children's church, you are Esther Palace, the first wooden house. So, we're going to have a break.